Okay, I'm Mike Willis. We've got another edition of Team USA Tuesday. I'm joined by Lauren Louise. Lauren is number two on the national team at 59 kilograms. Lauren, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, you know, catching you a couple weeks after uh, winning the senior nationals title. I'm sure you're, you're still feeling pretty good about that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I got a list of questions here. Are you ready to jump into them? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do it. So starting off, what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Oh, gosh. Um, either The Gladiator or The Notebook. <laughs> Okay, so we're opposite ends of the spectrum on those. Very cool. Yeah. Um, who is your favorite musical artist? Uh, I don't have one, but probably anything country. Country? So country is your go-to genre? Uh, as long as I'm not wrestling. If I'm not wrestling, do not put country on. <laughs> if I am <laughs> wrestling, don't put country on. <laughs> if, if you're wrestling, what kind of music do you, do you listen to? Or are you like a no music type of person? I can do anything. I can do no music. I can do whatever's pop, you know, like, like pop music or uh, literally anything besides country. <laughs> anything but country. Got it. Yeah. But uh, if we're in the sauna, you can put that country music on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your favorite food? And maybe favorite food when you can eat whatever you want and then favorite food when you're, you know, maintaining your, your competitive weight. Um, I have two favorite foods, and they're my favorite food no matter what. <laughs> um, it's watermelon and steak. So, uh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, what kind of what kind of steak is your favorite cut? Uh, literally anything. <laughs> I'm not I'm not picky when it comes to steak. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, what is your favorite sport to watch other than wrestling? Oh, um, anything barrel racing, mounted shooting. Uh, my sister just competed at the mounted shooting uh, world championships and and took fourth in her class and that was really uh, cool to watch. I watched online. It was really cool to watch. Um, I seen three world ch world records speaks that so that was I, I like anything with the horses. Very cool. That's uh, not a typical sport. I'd say most people most people say you know when they're when they're talking about their favorites. Um, how did your sister get into it and and did you do that too growing up? Yeah, my family had horses um, growing up. I grew up on a horse farm. We had uh, 17 horses growing up, and uh, my parents still own them. My sister has horses, um, and she's she's still competing competitively. I grew up riding, and I, my mom always laughs and says that I could ride a horse before I could walk. So, <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. 17, that's not like one or two either. That's a, that's a herd. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really cool. It must have been really interesting growing up on a, a horse farm. Could you maybe shed a little uh, insight into what that was like? Yeah. Um, I mean, you have a lot of chores. You know, you feed and water the horses um, every morning and night and, you know, clean their stalls out and brush them. And, of course, riding them is the fun part. Um, and some of the more tedious stuff is, of course, like making hay and, you know, bringing the feed in, going to get the feed, bringing it, carrying it in, and, you know, moving hay. and uh, but but doing hay in the summertime was like one of the biggest things, you know, as a kid, um, I think it creates like a, a lot of discipline and then, you know, it also makes, made me physically strong as well. Um, but, but yeah, having horses, it was a lot of fun, but there was also a lot of work that went into it. Um, I remember my dad, you know, telling us a lot of times we would want to go, you know, say to like, I don't know, to a lake and stay the night or something. And my dad's like, no, we have horses. You can't stay the night. We have to take care of our animals or, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I'm sure that's like a lot of responsibility growing up for, you know, being a kid, but uh, essentially making sure you maintain, you know, your family's uh, business too. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It was a lot. Um, so wh when did you get in, involved with wrestling? Um, I was in eighth grade. Yeah. I started in eighth grade and my little brother had been wrestling for a couple of years and that's kind of how I got into it. He would, uh, he'd come home from wrestling practice and he'd be like, I'd just be watching TV or not paying it, just not paying attention. And he would jump on me and we'd start wrestling and he'd be like, look at this new move I learned. And he, you know, my arms up here and I'm like, what? How? Just fighting him off of me. So we would play wrestle a lot. And then I have a couple older brothers and they would just, we would just rough house and wrestle all the time. So, yeah. When did you realize it might be a career path for you? 
well, when I really wanted to get into it, besides, you know, just the rough housing at home <laughs> was when, so my little brother, he, we would go and watch him compete. He was, a, he was a youth wrestler. And because of the farm, he was like farm kid strong, if you will. And so he won most of his matches, uh, not off technique, but just off of pure strength. And um, he had won like the championship for little kids or whatever, like three years in a row. And uh, the, the going into the, his fourth year, we went to watch him and he lost in the finals, but it was like, a, you could see it was like, a, it was like a mindset thing. It wasn't strength. It wasn't technique. It was like the mindset stuff was actually coming into play. And um, I was like, man, I would have beat that kid. I, I could have won that match. I think I'm going to try this. And I told my parents and they're like, oh, no, 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 you, you don't want to do that. And the more they told me I didn't want to do it, the more I wanted to do it. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was, yeah, I went into it then in eighth grade and continued on. And then when I was in high school, my high school coach was like, hey, you know, you could get a scholarship and wrestle in college. And I was like, no way. So yeah, then the rest is history. <laughs> How uh, quickly did your parents come around to it? Um, well, they were, I'd never say they were against it because they were like, if there's anything you guys want to try, you guys can always, you know, they were always very supportive. Um, but I know that they, especially my mom, did not want me to try wrestling. So, but she was like, all right, if you want to, you want to. But um, I'd say, I, I remember them screaming for me my first match. Like, <laughs> the first match I ever wrestled, it could just be like, just screaming for me. And so then after that, they were like, okay, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do this. So I think they were, they were pretty supportive all along. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like they got on board pretty quick. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, who is your favorite wrestler to watch either past or present? Ooh, favorite wrestler to watch. Um, I used to, you know, in college, I was a huge fan of Brett Metcalf. I used to love watching Metcalf and I think that's probably because we have similar styles. Um, I also liked watching um, Frank Molinaro compete. I'm probably saying his last name wrong. Um, but I liked uh, watching him compete as well. So, yeah. And I love watching, um, uh, I can't think of it, Nashawn, Nashawn Garrett. Yeah. Yeah. Three good ones for, for sure. Um, two bruisers and then kind of a, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know how I'd categorize Nishan's wrestling. Like, he, he's uh, <laughs> Burroughs calling that a while ago, like a, a superhero, the fledgling superhero that's just figuring out his powers. Um, <laughs> yeah. really fun wrestler to watch. Three really good ones. Um, so what are some of your hobbies off the mat? Um, off the mat, I like to do anything outdoors. Um, probably my favorite one would be horseback riding and I do compete in the mounted shooting. You know, I don't train with it anywhere near like my sister does world championships. <laughs> but uh, but for fun, just shooting some guns off the horses and um, anything competitive with the horses. We do barrel racing and stakes and cones and things like that as well. Um, so anything with the horses. Um, I like to fish. Um, so, yeah, anything uh, outdoorsy. I like to hike. The Colorado, we got the mountains here. I love the mountains. They're absolutely beautiful. So getting out, doing the incline, doing some hiking, and yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, in a great place to do some outdoorsy stuff. You can't beat Colorado Springs. Uh, yeah. So you can be funny or you can be serious with this answer, but what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear? Oh, gosh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, um, I'm like, I'm not afraid of anything. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not really afraid of like spiders or anything like that. Um, I, I don't know. I guess when I'm in the ocean, like sharks are kind of scary, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair enough. Sharks, sharks are a very reasonable fear. <laughs> I'm not like afraid of heights or anything. Like there's nothing like that that I'm actually afraid of. So yeah, I guess maybe sharks. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you're in the thick of it right now, but do you know what you want to do once your competitive wrestling career is over? Oh, yes. I want to coach. I want to coach wrestling for sure. Um, I always tease uh, Terry Steiner, Coach Steiner, and tell him I'm going to take his job. And then he <laughs> tells me I can take his job along with all the gray hair that goes with it. <laughs> but uh, I, I would love to coach um, Division One women's wrestling um, and then eventually um, take on the national team head coach position as well. 
Yeah, well, uh, you know, exciting because when, when you're in line to, to do that, you know, we might have some Division One women's programs ready to, ready to go and, and start up. So that's really cool that that opportunity might be available because it's the first history that it, it's going to be a thing. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, so as I said in the beginning of the interview, a couple weeks ago, you won a senior national school. Uh, you were really dominant up until the finals where you had, I mean, probably my favorite match of the whole tournament, regardless of style, with uh, Zuchitl, uh Mona Pettis. And it was, you know, back and forth. I think you were you were trailing most of the match, uh, tied it up, she pulled ahead again, and then you hit a beautiful headlock uh, for the win, for the pin. Uh, could you just tell us a little bit about it and what was going through your head? Yeah, um, it was... It was definitely a fun and exciting match. And, you know, I, I hear people tell me uh, or, you know, in an in interview or something like that where people are like, oh, you know, you were, you were trailing most of the match. You were behind most of the match. But um, to tell you the truth, in the match, I didn't, it didn't feel that way. Um, I knew, you know, I was in it the whole time. And not just in it. I was like, okay, like, let's, let's keep wrestling. Let's see how this plays out here. Um, I never felt behind. Um, I knew I was down on points, but I never felt like um, I was behind and I had to, you know, make up or anything like that. Um, probably until I hit that, um, that headlock. Um, and I was just, you know, hey, I got to get to an attack, get to an attack, get to an attack. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of um, how that match played out for me. And then, you know, going back and watching it, I was like, oh, well, that felt much differently than that looked. <laughs> so um, it, de it definitely did look like I was behind most of the match, but being in my shoes during the match, um, it felt a little bit different. It felt, um, I felt like I was in control of the match, even though I know watching it, it didn't look that way. So were you, did you know that headlock was, was there? Had you felt that earlier in the match or was that just a, in the moment, it's there, I'm going to hit it type of thing? It was in the moment. I didn't know I was going to hit that. Um, it was definitely in the moment. I was like, oh, there it is. I was just looking for an attack. I didn't care what it was. Um, and then that I felt it present itself and I was like, all right, well, I'm going. <laughs> so. So Moda Pettis actually had a heck of a tournament herself. Um, Pinned Allie Reagan with a beautiful lefty headlock uh, in the quarterfinals. Um, were you, I mean, you know, I know a lot of people don't, you know, look at who they're wrestling or look at the brackets, but I'm going to assume you were aware that, that she pinned Allie, who again was the 59 kilogram world team member. You two were teammates and wrestled at Final X last year. Uh, were, you, were you paying attention to that at all uh, in the brackets? Um, honestly, I didn't look at the brackets at all. Um, but I did see it, I actually seen it happening. I was, um, up to wrestle and, you know, they have the computer screens there and I was following along and I just kind of glanced up and I seen Allie on her back there and, uh, I seen Pettis get the win. And so I, I did know it happened. Um, and so I had seen it and I was like, oh, okay, cool. But yeah, you know, you can't really get too emotionally involved into those things while you're still competing. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that, that just happened. <laughs> so. Yeah. So what, what do you think it says for, for the state of the sport and women's wrestling in particular when you've got, you know, up and comers, you know, I think, I believe she's just a, a couple years out of high school um, coming in and, and challenging and beating established senior women. Um, I think it, you know, it speaks for a lot of things. It definitely speaks for the growth of women's wrestling and in wrestling in general, you know, we have this all the time in men's wrestling too, right? Where these young up and comers come up and they challenge a, senior well, unknown senior level competitor right and so it's happening now with the women too which is great I, you know that's what we want for the support for the sport um, we want to see the growth we want that we want those challenging matches because we want the best person representing team usa that we can possible right so um, i think at the younger level the athletes are getting more and more of that developmental um, attention and growth and things like that that they need more and more resources and clubs and things like that are popping up and available and um, accepting, you know, of the women and supportive of the women. And I think that's huge. And I think it's great. Um, I, yeah, I think it's really, really good. Um, so you were at the uh, training at the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and you were actually there before they brought in Forrest, Allie, uh, Kayla and Michaela. Um, now you're in Colorado Springs. 
Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what led you to the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and your transition from it to Colorado Springs? Yeah. Um, actually, Mike Duro is what led me to the Hawkeye Wrestling Club, and he was an awesome, awesome man. And, uh, yeah, I miss him. But um, he was what led me to the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. I had worked with him in – see, I moved to the Hawkeye Wrestling Club in 2015, so it was that World Team Trials that spring before um, – that I had um, worked with him, and I had just worked with him at a couple of practices, a couple of workouts, and then I went on to World Team Trials, and I don't know, the coach that was coaching me at the time wasn't in my, there was like no one in my corner, or some, something happened, and um, I don't really remember, but um, Coach Duro comes running around the corner, and he's like yelling at me in the middle of the world, and I just met this man, right? I just, I had just done like two workouts with him, maybe three workouts with him, and he's screaming at me from across the room, and I'm like, whoa, okay. So he got my attention. I had no idea what he was saying, but just because he was yelling at me. So then, so then after the match um, and after that world team trials, we had spoke a little bit and he was like, you know, you, he's telling me about the training environment that I need to find myself in. And he said, if that's Iowa city, Iowa. And I said, yes, I want to come to Iowa and train with you. And he said, all right, let me talk to the brands. And uh, so he took, uh, he took his time getting back to me on that one. And they talked it over and they're like, yeah, Hawkeye wrestling club's ready to add a female, their first female. So we'd like to have you come on down. And I said, okay. So I moved um, in 2015, August of 2015, I moved to Iowa City and trained in the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. And I was there for four years. And um, then uh, after the final X last year, um, I just moved out here to Colorado Springs in August of last year. So, yeah. yeah. And it's been great. I, I um, appreciated everything that the Hockey Wrestling Club has done for me and training out in Iowa. And then my transition out here to um, the Olympic Training Center has been wonderful as well. What was your favorite thing about the Iowa Wrestling Room? And then what's your favorite thing so far about being at the OTC? My favorite thing about the Iowa Wrestling Room? Hmm. Let's see. Probably... Uh, probably, you know, the connections and the people that I met along with, um, you know, what it did for me as an athlete, you know, what it did for me as a, as a competitor, you know, the kind of um, the things I got to see, the level of, you know, the, the thinking behind the things that I got to see, you know, those kind of like, this is why we do this, this is why we do this, this is why we do this type of thing. At Iowa and then you know the connections and the people that I met as well and then here in Colorado Springs um, you know everything was completely different from Iowa um, the way that they do things here are is completely different and there's no right or wrong way it's just what works for you and you know for me it was almost finding a balance between the two you know it wasn't all one way or all another way it's like all right well this uh, you know this worked from Iowa or you know, I'm going to keep that or learning how to do this here in Colorado Springs that that works for me too. So um, that's probably my favorite thing um, here in Colorado Springs. I also love the people here too. Uh, you know, all my teammates and um, all the girls and the coaches and everyone's great and um, everyone's striving for the same goal here, right? You know, everyone's training for for the Olympics, you know, um, in, in Iowa City, everyone's training for a national title, you know, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. What do you think the most challenging aspect of dealing with, you know, the COVID-19 world has, has been for you? The most challenging? Yeah. Um, I guess, I mean, probably like everybody, just the not knowing, you know, like still not knowing if there's a world or if the U.S. is going <laughs> or if there's a world team trials and things like that. So, so the, just the not knowing, but then learning, it's been good for me though, because then learning how to be okay with that. Like, okay, I'm okay with not knowing because I know I'm going to do well no matter what. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. So you've, uh, you've moved down a weight class, uh, 59 to 57 is like, I think the, the smallest increment between weight classes but is 57 a challenge for you at all? Or is it, you know, not, not a big deal? Um, I don't think it's a big deal when I'm, you know, when I stay disciplined. So just staying disciplined on my nutrition and, uh, you know, not having that piece of cake or <laughs> that ice cream or something like that. Right. So just staying disciplined with my nutrition and, um, and uh, yeah, I'm good to go. So. 
Yeah. Does that like not knowing factor into kind of nutrition with stuff like, oh, I sort of have to, you know, maintain this discipline indefinitely when I don't even know what competitions and, you know, tournaments I'm going to be wrestling at? Well, yes and no, because I mean, it's still an Olympic year, right? So like, even though I don't know what competitions I'm going to be competing or wrestling at, I know that I need to have my weight down for this, this year anyway. I know something's going to come up, right? Even if, even if it's, you know, I get offered a match or if they're like, hey, there's a tournament in two weeks, are you going? You know, like just being ready, you know, staying ready, staying in that, um, that preparedness. So no cake all year. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so what do you think the best advice you've received in your career has been or a piece of advice that really stands out to you? Um, probably focus on yourself. You know, so much we get caught up in, you know, the person that we're wrestling or our opponents or, you know, this, that big scary guy in the room with the tattoos. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like just, we just get caught, so caught up on either what other people may think about, about us or what they do think about us. Or even again, like wrestling against your opponents, you're, you know, you're not really wrestling against your opponent. You're wrestling against yourself. You know, it's, you know, yourself that's, you know, most important. So focusing on you, whether that's in the practice room or in the competition room. What advice would you give to somebody that's just starting out in the sport? Oh, just starting out in the sport? Mm, to have fun. I mean, because you want them to fall in love with the sport first. If you, you know, if you try and go all technical or like all these things, the person doesn't care unless, you know, they actually love what they're doing. So to have fun with it so that they fall in love with what they're doing. Yeah, makes sense. Um, during your, your toughest training sessions or, you know, maybe a day where you're not feeling 100%, what do you use as motivation to keep yourself going or to get that one last rep or that one last sprint? Mm, I guess – what, what, wait, what I do when I'm not feeling like, motivated? Like, what, like what, uh, where does your motivation come from and your drive to, to get through those tough practices or, again, those, you know, maybe those days where you're not feeling 100%? Mm, I just think about the wrestler that I want to be and the things that I want to accomplish. And, you know, I know when I think about who – who I am as the wrestler that I want to be, you know, the wrestler and the person that I want to be. And okay, what does that person look like? Well, would that person do one more rep? Hell yeah, they're going to do five more reps. So um, that's where it comes from of not like feeling sorry for myself or letting myself be in the place that I am in that moment, but looking forward into who I want to become and the things that I want to accomplish and, and that wrestler that I want to be. And how would that wrestler react right now? well, that wrestler is going to do these things. And so then I do that. <laughs> um, last question I got for you, Lauren. Uh, what is your best wrestling memory to date? Wow. My best wrestling memory to date. Like it can be anything? Anything. Huh. Well, I don't know if this was the best, but this was pretty fun. Um, so when we were in Ukraine uh, last year, two years ago, I don't remember. But Team USA is there. Canada's there. There's a bunch of us there. Um, it's after the tournament. Um, we had a day or so to, like, explore the city and stuff. And then we had to catch this bus at, like, 3 a.m. or some ridiculous time. And so everyone's in – and it's a shuttle bus, so everyone has to go at the same time. So we're all in the lobby, and there's, like – I know it's U.S. and Canada for sure. I don't know if there's a couple other countries down there as well. Um, but Nashon just gets on the baby grand piano and starts playing. And I forget what song he was singing, but it's like, it's like a song that everybody knows. Okay. And so um, Maya starts singing, Maya Nelson starts singing and then Jaden jumps in and he starts singing and someone else was there. I can't remember. There's like three people singing and then everyone just busts out singing. And it's cool. Cause it's like, you know, us Canada and I'm, I'm sure there's other countries as well but there's a ton of people just everyone's just coming together just singing Greco freestyle women's wrestling and everyone just singing at 3 a.m and having a good time so um that was a lot of fun yeah that, that sounds like a really cool moment um yeah 
someone should have whipped out a phone and, and got that on YouTube because uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyways, Lauren, thanks for coming on today. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your time and, and giving us a little bit of insight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. This has been another edition of Team USA Tuesday. I'm Mike Willis. Thanks for tuning in.